Okay, I think people online can see it now. Okay. Yes. Now I'm going to play it and tell me if you can hear it. Just a little bit, if I could just sit here, let my food digest, just try to enjoy the quiet for a little bit. Get some. Get some. Get can you guys some. hear it? Yeah. Online. You can hear it? Yeah. Okay, okay. So everyone, this is now we're starting this with this video, okay? So this is a argument between husband and wife. Very typically, things like this will happen. Maybe not in the context of what they're arguing about. But one of the first things we're going to start with is talking about what went wrong in this conversation. Uh, you can't see the video that well because they weren't wearing appropriate clothes. So I had to like do my own editing, as you can see. Um, so the wife comes home. She sees the husband playing video games. He just came from home. He wants to relax for 30 minutes before he does anything. The wife's like, uh, do you want to help me with the dishes? And the argument starts. Okay. That's the video game. I'm going to go do the dishes. Cool. It'd be nice if you help me. No problem. Uh, get a little bit later. I'm just going to the streets here for a little bit. Gary, come on. I don't want to do them later. Let's just do them now. Take 15 minutes. Honestly, want to relax for a little bit. If I could just sit here, let my food digest, just try to enjoy the quiet for a little bit. Get some. Get some. Get some. That's what happens. And we will oh, clean the dishes tomorrow. Gary, you know, I don't like waking up to a dirty kitchen. Who cares? I care. All right? I care. I busted my ass all day cleaning this house and then cooking that meal and I worked today. It would be nice if you said thank you and helped me with the dishes. Fine. I'll help you do the damn dishes. Oh, come on. You know what? No. Let's see. That's not what I want. You just said that you want me to help you do the dishes. I want you to want to do the dishes. Why would I want to do dishes? Why? See, that's my whole point. Let me see if I'm following this. <laughs> Are you telling me that you're upset because I don't have a strong desire to clean dishes? No, I'm upset because you don't have a strong desire to offer to do the dishes. I just did. After I asked you. Jesus, Brooke, you're acting crazy. Don't yes. you call me crazy. I am not crazy. I didn't call you crazy. Just I didn't did. call you crazy. No, I didn't. I said you're acting crazy. You know what, Gary? I asked you to do one thing today, one very simple thing, to bring me 12 lemons, and you brought me three. Oh, damn it. If I knew that it was going to be this much trouble, I would have brought home 24 lemons. Even 100 lemons. I know what I wish? I wish everyone that was at that goddamn table had their own little private bag of lemons. Sure, it's I'm not sad. about the lemons. Well, that's all you're talking about. I'm just saying it, it'd be nice if you did things that I asked. It would be even nicer if you did things without me having to ask you. Well, you seem to remember doing something for you this morning without you asking. Gary, come on. I'm you know, serious. No, I'm, I'm serious. I, am I really am. Come on, you knew I was working today and I made that meal and you could have thought to yourself, you know, you could have said, yeah, I, I, I think I'm going to get Brooke some flowers. You said on our very first date that you don't like flowers, that they're a waste of money. Who you know, likes flowers, Gary? You say that you don't like flowers. I'm supposed to take that to mean that you do like flowers? No, this is not about, you're not, you're not, you're, 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 Dad, you're not getting it. You're not getting this, Gary. Okay, it's not about the lemons, it's not about the flowers, it's not about the dishes. It's just, um, how many times do I have to drop hints about the ballet? You know I can't stand. Brooke, come here. We talked about the damn ballet. I hate the goddamn ballet. You got a bunch of dudes in tights flopping around for three hours. It's like a medieval techno show. It's a nightmare. My sister's gonna sweat. The whole thing. I do. When, when the hell's the goddamn nightmare gonna end? Go to a damn ballet. It's not about you loving the ballet, Gary. It's about the person that you love loves the ballet. And you want to spend time with that person. Not when you're at the ballet. Okay, forget the ballet. Forget the ballet. We don't go anywhere together. We just went to Ann Arbor together. To Ann Arbor? To the Michigan Notre Dame game? You, th you think screaming drunk kids and leprechauns doing backflips, that's fun. That's fun for me. Come on, man. I did that for you. What do you? How do you show up for me? I'm up on the bus every goddamn day Come for you. Come on. I'm busting my ass to be the best tour guy in the damn city so I can make enough money to support both of us, and hopefully you won't have to work one day. I want to work. All I ask, Brooke, is that you show a little bit of appreciation that I just get 20 minutes to relax when I come home instead of being attacked with questions and nag the whole damn thing. You think that I nag you? That's all you do. All you do is nag me. The bathroom's a mess. Your belt doesn't match. Hey, Gil, you should probably go work out. Nothing I ever do is ever good enough. I 
just want to be left the hell alone. Okay, so they walk out. Really? Is that what you want, Gary? Is that what you want? Yeah. That's what you want? Yeah. Fine, great. Do whatever the hell you want. You leave your socks all over this house, dress like a pig, play your stupid-ass video game. I don't care. I'm done. What? I am done. I don't deserve this. I really do not deserve this. I deserve somebody who was second of this life with some... Okay. So I want you to think about what went wrong in that conversation and it's very easy for anyone to fall into the same mistakes uh so anybody want to guess what is one of the biggest mistakes here bringing up too many issues piling on too many issues right rather than trying to solve one issue at a time that would be one escalating the conversation uh playing the blame game right where nothing gets resolved so those are some of the things that we'll be looking at from a different perspective and that is before i talk so there's this balance right and western academics or western psychology has gone to one extreme but that extreme also has a problem the problem that western the the problem that Western academics has is that they want to validate the feelings to the point that you can't change anything. Because I'll talk about this as we go on. But there is an aspect to this that is very positive that I want to uh, bring up. So let me just start with. You watch the pancake. I don't care. Yeah, you just said when I was left. Was he in the room again? I don't know. I was downstairs. Okay. All right. So now we're going to look at this uh, argument between the husband and the wife. Was everyone able to hear, by the way? Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the most important things to do after you're in the whole enchantment phase is to understand this very basic principle that is extremely important for people to understand. That is, I am responsible for my own happiness and well-being within our relationship. Generally, we think my wife will make me happy or my husband will make me happy. As long as that is your paradigm within the marriage, you're bound to suffer right? So I'm responsible for my own happiness and well-being within our relationship. I choose my attitudes, my thoughts, my communication and behavior. So when we saw this couple fighting with each other, right? Uh, no one was taking responsibility for how they're feeling for themselves. They were, he was putting it on her and she was putting it on him. This is a very fundamental point that if you don't get to you won't find Sakina. You won't find tranquility. Because while there are things about your spouse you may be able to negotiate and change, there are things about your spouse that he can't change about you or she can't change about him. And that's just how it is. And that's, some, that's the realization you can only come to if you say, I'm responsible for my own happiness. My husband is not the one who really makes me happy. Meaning it's all from Allah. And, huh? Are we going to make maghrib now? Okay. Um, okay, then we can pray maghrib now and then we'll continue after maghrib then? Or how do you want to do this? So we'll quickly pray maghrib and then continue because I didn't really even start yet. So, okay, guys. Those of you that are online will have to wait. And we'll be back in maybe 15 minutes. And we'll continue till 8.30, I think. Okay, inshallah. So let's do Adhan and pray. Okay. Yeah, please. Uh, Qibla is script. <laughs> Yeah. Allah. 
Okay, let's do it. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Shalom, la ilaha illallah. Shalom, la Muhammad Rasulullah. Shalom, la ilaha illallah. Shalom, la ilaha illallah. Shalom, la ilaha illallah. Shalom, la ilaha illallah. Allah Akbar إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا أيها الناس أنتم الفقراء إلى الله والله هو الغني الحميد إن يشأ يذهبكم ويأتي بخلق جديد وما ذلك على الله بعزيز ولا ت ولا تزر وازرة وزر أخرى وإن تدع مثقلة إلى حلها لا يحمل منه شيئا ولو كان ولو كان ذا قربا إنما تنذر الذين يخشون ربهم بالغيب وأقاموا الصلاة ومن تزكى فإنما يتزكى لنفسه وإلى الله المصير الله أكبر I got the pirate. Sami Allah Liman Hamida. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Time to wake up. 
Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Malik Yawm Al-Din. Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka Nista'in. Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim. Sirat Al-Ladhin An-Amda Alayhim. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Thank <laughs> you.
Yeah, she's okay. Yeah, 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 she's fine. Yeah, so you should I should stay down first. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I remember the whole text. I mean, I would have been this for a while or something. So,
It should be simple. It's not complex back here. Like it's pretty simple. I mean, it's very complex downstairs, though. <laughs> it's complex a little bit, huh? Yeah. I hear the videos all the time. Okay. Shall I, if everyone's ready, let's get back to it. So, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, was salat was salam ala Sayyid al Mursaleen Muhammad in Il Amin. Allah Masalli was salim ala Muhammad al Kmara. So, we looked at the argument, and now I'm going to, well, I was going to try to present this model, but I don't think I'll be able to do that today. Because on the one side, you have this type of back and forth between a husband and wife, the one that we saw on the video. And the other side, you have this, you can say, I'm responsible for my own happiness and my well-being within the relationship. And I choose my attitudes, thoughts, communication, and behavior. When things go wrong, I make strengthening, cho strengthening choices to correct the problem rather than blaming you or making excuses. So your wife will not, in the end of the day, make you happy, and nor will your husband. It's all about your own. You have to, so either your husband changes or your wife changes or you change. Right. So it's it's somewhere in between that. So if you're responsible and if so, this lady comes to her husband and says, hey, I'm going to do the dishes. Can you help me? He's thinking I'm tired. I need 20 minutes of rest before I want to help her. And now they're fighting. So if they were both thinking from this perspective of taking responsibility, they would have had a different result, which we're going to get into, inshallah, as we discuss other uh, aspects. So self-responsibility is taking ownership of your life, meaning your happiness. You're not a passenger, but you're on the driver's seat of your life. You shape your life by your ability to make choices. Uh, marriage works when you take responsibility for yourself, your mood, happiness, self-esteem, needs, as well as well-being. So when your wife is doing that and when the husband is doing that, that actually makes the team. But when the husband is, is, is depending upon the wife too much, or if the wife is depending upon the husband too much, then it inevitably leads to a conflict. So I'm not feeling bad because my wife didn't do something, or I'm not feeling bad because my husband didn't do something. It's, it's not external, it's the internal. So that is a perspective that needs to be kept in mind, even though you don't want to go to an extreme with that, because then that takes away any responsibility from the other side. So that's very important to know. Your spouse is not responsible for your mood. Now, that's what I really want to emphasize is the mood. Your spouse is not responsible for your mood, happiness, and needs. It is easy to put your responsibility on the other partner. So... We'll go back to that fight, but let's look at a few other things. Your partner does not want to, and here are just some examples. Your partner doesn't want to have intimacy. Uh, he or she loves video games and can't stop playing. Your partner did not give you time like you liked. Your partner came home and just watched TV. Your partner came home, lacks ambition. Your partner made you feel X. And now you start, what, forcing, coercing, nagging, so you can be happy. So the, the place where you're coming from in your communication can't be, well, you need to do this so that I become happy. It needs to be more from, you need, we need to do this because of X. It's, so you take, you're not making it about yourself only, okay? Now you resent your partner and you want to take revenge. And eventually that's kind of like where things build up to and things pile up over to over the years. Yes, you want your, yes, uh, yes, what your partner says and does affect you. Self-responsibility is a type of freedom where you're not 
only depending upon your partner for your state of happiness. Uh, this is not about caring, though. You still have to take responsibility for your partner. Now, um, I want to go a little bit more into this with this diagram that we have here. I feel responsible for my spouse versus I feel responsible to my spouse. Meaning in this argument that we just saw, right? Uh, you expect, you become the victim. Everybody becomes the victim. The husband becomes his victim. Oh, you know, you nag me. And the wife's like, you don't do anything for me. And so everyone's the victim. And that victim state is where, where you don't have real freedom. Uh, you become the victim. And rather than taking that, this person, this other person I'm in marriage with is not ultimately the person who's going to bring me happiness, especially after the first phase. So then what happens? The person who feels responsible for, I'm responsible for Omer, right? Or I'm responsible for X. What, let me fix him, solve him, protect him, rescue him, control him, right? And then you're going to say, I feel tired, I'm worried, I'm fearful, I feel unappreciated because you're depending upon the other to do all those things for you. Expect them to live up to my expectations, manipulate them to make sure things turn out right. So this is kind of like living on the edge in the survival mode. And in the survival mode, you're also in the victim mode. Versus I feel responsible to my spouse. So that is to show empathy, right? Oh, you feel tired. You came from work. Oh, you want to help me after 20 minutes. That's, you know, where one way the conversation could have gone. Uh, to encourage and to support and to love and to listen. Uh, feel relaxed, trusting. Now, trust is a big issue. If we have time, we're going to talk about it today because I'll talk till about 8.30. So I have a little bit of time. Let's see how fast I can say these things. Feeling relaxed, trusting. Trusting is a big, very important thing. As I'll, I'll show you today a diagram where this comes in. Trust them to live up to their own expectations. This is very, very important point. Trust them to live up to their own expectations. If you have a proper conversation, then the person will be able to say, this is what I'm able to do. I'm able to help in 20 minutes. So trust them to live up to their own expectations. I'm concerned with enjoying our relationship, right? So it's, it's less about uh, being a victim, less about specific external things like, in this case, cleaning the dishes, uh, or for that matter, it's less about, I need my 20 minutes of rest. I could do that after I could do the dishes, right? So it's about each person taking their responsibility to make it, to make a, a situation of empathy. She could have said in terms of empathy, oh, you need, you know, I understand you're tired. I'll give you 20 minutes. He could have said, yeah, I'm tired, but how about I take a 20 minute rest after I help you do the dishes? So if there's empathy from any direction, a proper level of empathy, things could work out. So let me now tell you the hiking story that demonstrates responsibility two and four, four and two. So there is a, 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 a husband, he took the boys to hiking. And when they went up the mountain, they realized that there is a wild fi uh, fire that started in California and it is headed towards them. And now they went all this like six miles up. So now they have to, they got there late to begin with. So they went up and now it's like eight and it's dark and they need to make a choice. Are they going to stay up or, and, and, and maybe it could become a dangerous situation with a wildfire right in front of them, or should they go back home? So the father and the children, they decide, well, let's hike back and go home and we'll come back another time because it might, could get risky. So the husband packs everything up and they go to the car, they drive, you know, they make their hike back down, they drive home, he's home, it's 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, he's extremely tired, he has blisters on his feet, and he comes to the house and he has this, you know, feeling, I want to discuss this with my wife. Well, back in those days, they didn't have the, the cell phone like we have now when this story actually happened. So now he comes home. And, you know, he, he wants to tell his wife, 
you know, this situation occurred. He comes home. The lights are turned off. He goes to the bedroom. His wife's in bed. And he's like, I'm back. And she's like, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm really tired. I had a really tiring day. Uh, let's just go to sleep. So he's sitting in bed, upset that his wife didn't want to listen to his amazing story that happened today. And, you know, he's, uh, I forget what word they used, uh, a very specific word. But anyway, he's upset and he's becoming a victim, right? At this point, he's becoming a victim. He gets up, he takes a shower, goes to sleep. Uh, and <clears throat> so now next morning, what happens? Next morning, he wakes up and he realizes, wait, I became a victim in this process uh, to my own self because of how I thought my wife was with me. And so, you know, he came over that. And so everything was fine. That's the short version. What is happening? He's looking for a connection. He couldn't do it. He, he gets, uh, oh, I forgot a very important point. So when he wakes up in the morning, guess what the wife does? The wife complains about all the, what do you think? The hiking stuff in the house and how it's not organized and everything, right? So now he first already felt a sense of indifference. And now in the morning, she's complaining about all the boys. None of you took responsibility. None of you put everything where it's supposed to be. And what happens as a result of a situation like that? This is a very, very important concept. You start to build a case. What do I mean by that? You start to build a case against your spouse. You start to build a case, see, uh, and it usually happens when you look at the monologues and when you look at the, the, the couples when they argue, it happens when someone was looking for a connection. So was it really about dishes or was it really about getting 20 minutes of rest or was it for about a connection? And then the husband says, oh, I'll do the dishes, but after 20 minutes, she feels an indifference, then she starts complaining. Now she's trying to build a case against her husband to her husband. And he's trying to do the same. So now, let's go over this one more time. Uh, disown responsibilities, own my responsibilities. You focus on what is on the outside, what your spouse is doing or not doing. It happens in a very uh, un unthought way it's 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 a you're lashing out it's unconscious it's reactive you're acting out on emotions you blame the spouse for what's not working you build your case again that's very very important when you start building a case against your spouse that's where you need to stop and think okay where did we go wrong because as soon as the husband or as soon as the wife start building a case and that building a case that becomes an assumption in your conversations forever after that. Okay? Because once you built a case in your mind and now you're talking to your husband or now you're talking to... Assalamualaikum. So now you're talking to your husband, talking to your wife, and you have a case built up against them. They have a case built up against you. You have a case built up against them and you're communicating with one another what's going to happen. It's going to affect the communication. It's not no longer about the words that are being received. They're now being received via this filter that they've built up against you. Right. And so um, let's take uh, we'll 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 look at one case in a little bit, a, a real case. Uh, OK, so you build a case. You try to prove yourself right, defensive and self proactive. Well, you're not going to do it. So I'm just going to do it because you're not doing it. Right. So and, and you feel like the victim. That is when you are no and wallahi, I'll tell you this, the truth. Once you're in that state, the state that I'm talking about, where you have a case built against your spouse. And once you're feeling like the victim, which will happen on both sides. Wallahi, when you communicate with each other, you're saying one thing and the other person's hearing something different. So if the husband says, I'll do it in a little while. What she's hearing is, I don't want to do it, right? Because you've already built up a case. This is how this person is. And so all your communication 
goes based upon that case, that, that filter, that assumption that you've made. And so uh, let's take this further now. So seeing the story that I just told you about the hiking situation, seeing the story from a more broader perspective, instead of building a case, what is building a broader perspective is that when you're not acting, reacting, acting, reacting, but it's about, okay, I came home. She said she was tired and I accept that, right? Uh, and so I see the broader perspective. You're trying to be empathetic. You're trying to, you're, trusting means you take them at their word. But when you build a case, you can no longer take your partner at, your word, at their word. You have to reinterpret what they're saying to what you think that they're saying without even realizing that that's what you're doing. So seeing the story from a more broader, meaning an empathetic situation, instead of building a case, right? So what's really going on here? Why, you know, like, okay, so there is the, the, the conflict and then the conversation. The conflict is different from the conversation in the sense the conflict is happening at the moment of the conflict. And that's where you need to have this broader perspective. But then later on, at some point, you need to have a time where you have an actual discussion of what you were expecting, why you were expecting. So these are two different types of discussions couples need to have. And they usually think these two are one, meaning the conflict is not the discussion. The discussion is the one is the, is the, is something that is scheduled where the husband and wife check into each other and say, okay, how are we doing? What are you not happy with, right? But the conflict itself, where the conflict is, at that time, you're trying your best to be as empathetic and seeing the bigger picture. Your relationship is really two relationships, the relationship in your head and the relationship in your partner's head. I have a case against my wife. My wife has a case against me in her head and in my head. And so now when we're gonna communicate, what is automatically going to happen, and a big part of that filter, the case that people develop in their minds that I'm the victim, or I can't trust my husband, or I can't trust my wife, then everything filters through that communication, filters through that filter that's already assuming, well, I can't trust this person, or this person is X, Y, Z. Your relationship is really two relationships. The relationship in your head and the relationship in your partner's head. Now, let me make it very clear here, because if I had more time, I'd go into this, is that, of course, things can't be left at this level all the time. Why? Because there have to be limits. There have to be boundaries. A person can't be just like empathetic all the time and the other person's not taking any responsibility. But over here, I'm not talking about the discussion between the husband and the wife. I'm talking about the conflict itself, the moment of conflict. Okay. So I have three minutes, so let's see how far we get. Stop seeing your perspective as right. Take a more, take more empathy and compassion, meaning broader perspective, not by making a case. Even if the negative is true, meaning even if your filter is right, that the person always makes excuses, the person never does what I want, but you're not going to win in an argument. So it's better to try to get something out of the empathy than try to win an argument. It'll never happen. It's never happened. It will never happen. You know, everyone will leave the argument with their case built in their mind even further. She doesn't care, or she always does this, or she's always negative. She's always asking me the same thing, et cetera, et cetera. Now, remember what we said was the subatomic particles of a relationship. It was called bidding. Remember that? Behind every request you make, Behind every bidding, behind every request, there is fear, there is the sense of being on the eggshells, there's resentment, there's peace, there is trust or indifference, or this, the, a certain case has already been built before even that bidding has been done. And you have either empathy when you're making a bid, a request, or you are building a case. So. If my wife says to me, can you make the bed uh, when we wake up in the morning and she already has it, let's say in her mind that I'm not going to do it, then she'll ask one way. But if she thinks I'm going to do it because she's asking, then she'll ask another way. 
So she might say to me, are you going to make the bed? Right. So it, it, it like it throws everything off or not broader perspective versus responsible for it, meaning being in the victim state, building a case and so on and so forth. Validation cycle. OK, I'll talk about validation cycle maybe next time, but I want to uh, I got one minute. So now the speaker. So let's say my wife is the person intending to speak. She has a filter. She gives me a message. I have my filter. I'm listening to her. It has an impact on my emotions, correct? So what she said to me comes through her filter, goes through my filter. What she said to me is maybe not what I'm hearing. And what we're finding out more than 50% of the time, what a person is saying and what the person is hearing in a moment of conflict are completely different. This is universal. This is cross-cultural. This is universal. The person saying, if they have a filter with certain assumptions, person hearing also has a case built from two years ago or one year ago or six months ago. A very Western example would be like she cheated or he cheated, right? There's already a filter. So every message will come around as different than what was given. So there was the intent of the speaker in what the listener is. So for example, if the, spe if the listener doesn't trust the speaker, so is that speaker going to hear the same thing the speaker is saying? No, they're not going to hear the same thing. And that filter that doesn't trust and that filter that already has a case. So the speaker has a case against the listener. The listener already has a case against the speaker and they're talking. So what will what will happen? It's inevitable, inevitable dead end, right? It's just a reaction, action, reaction, action, reaction, dead end. And so that's what you have to get out of. So communication occurs through. I'll finish up very quickly. No, no, no. How much time do I have? I mean, technically, we can if we're done, but we wrapped up. You know, if you finish by 8.45, and you question answer after that. Okay. Okay, inshallah. I can, I have, I have, I have more information than, uh, yeah. Okay. So you have the sender's mood and the receiver's mood, right? He's looking at the words. She's looking at the words. She's looking at the body language, the tone. The tone plays a very big role because when things escalate, what happens? The tone gets higher and higher and higher. And each one of those has a filter. The words you're saying has a filter. The body language you have has a filter. And uh, for example, uh, body language. Uh, husband comes uh, to the wife and says, uh, I got a job. And she's like, that's great. Congratulations. But she is on her desk typing and she can, continues to type away like nothing happened. So he's going to read into the body language filter. And then there's the tone filter, right? So communication process, the intended versus versus the received, and then back and forth. And this is where the when people are so-called in love, what happens? There's no case built against them. There's no history for that, right? What is the mood? The mood, mood is positive. So whatever the person is saying, it's being taken on its... Uh, on this, whatever the surface it means, right? Uh, if the if they're newly married and he says, and there's no filter, there's no past history, there's no bad blood, there's no, right? And the husband says, I'll do the dishes in five minutes, or I'll do the dishes in ten minutes, or I'll do the dishes in twenty minutes. It's more likely that at that point she'll be like, okay, let's do the dishes in twenty minutes. Or it's also more likely that when she comes and says, let's do the dishes. And he wanted to rest for 20 minutes. He'll, he's more likely because there's no history. There's no bad case. He's going to say, okay, let's do the dishes and then I'll rest. I'm just giving an example. So communication filters. Uh, I didn't like their chart here, but I just put it just to make the point that there are. The biggest element of the filter is trust versus distrust. This is the biggest one. And if you don't trust, what does that mean? The person has already built a case against his or her spouse. So instead of talking about, and this is the most difficult thing, I'm very, very serious about this. 
instead of talking about the case that is in your mind against your spouse, we talk about X, Y, Z. Did you do the dishes? Did you do the bed? Did you do this? Did you pay the bills? We'll talk about everything except for the case that we've built up in our minds, which is, you know, uh, dear, I don't trust you for any reason. And I really want to trust you. Or I, 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 you know, or whatever the issues are, the filter of expect the worst, the filter of he or she's my rival, the filter of in the end of the day, it's just me, I'm alone, all alone in this. No one's going to help me. Those are the conversations you need to have. Like if you ask yourself, what are the conversations I need to really have? Now, I'm not talking about the conflict. Remember I said the conflict is one thing and the conversation is another. At the moment of conflict, that's one what we were talking about, how the message goes back and forth, back and forth. But if you want to know what discussion should I be having with my husband or what discussion should I be having with my wife? What are the serious discussions we need to have? You need to ask yourself, what is the case I've built against my spouse? And start off with a very simple question. Do I trust my spouse or not? Do I feel that I'm in competition against my spouse? Do I feel indifferent to my spouse? Whatever the issue is, whatever case you have built against your spouse, that is what you need to sit down and say, look, we need an appointment. We need to talk about something important. And, and what we'll do is we'll talk about everything except for that. Building a good marriage is not about communicating so you understand each other in the end of the day. Because people communicate really well and still get divorced. And couples that fight get divorced. So fighting is not a factor. really. Some couples are very happy and they love to fight. So that's not really a factor. This whole communication thing in the Western model has been overemphasized in a sense, meaning it's still very, very key component. But really, the key component is what's in the heart. And what's in the heart? The case that you build up against your spouses. So that is really where you need to focus. And what is there? Uh, unfortunately, th this is what happens in therapy. In therapy, you kind of read into, OK, what is the case this person has built up? right, against their spouse and try to bring that to the table for discussion. But every couple should be doing that themselves. They need to look at themselves and say, okay, what is my case against my husband? Or what is my case against my wife? That is the discussion you need to have in a calm, proper environment, which we're not talking about today. Today, we're talking about what to do or how to take the idea, because the conflict is what creates the problem and then you never have the proper discussions so then things the case builds up and then there's not one case but then there's 10 cases or 20 cases things pile up and then everything that's happening in your life is to confirm that case that you built up in your mind so if the husband for example is doing 50 percent of the things and he's not doing 50 percent of things but because your filter only you know the, anybody ever hear of the red car syndrome that when you're about to buy a red car, all of a sudden you start seeing everywhere red cars, right? So if you think your husband never does anything you do, well, guess what? You only catch on to those parts of your life where your husband is reconfirming your bias or confirming your bias. So it's very important that you look at the case you've built and then you sit down with yourself and ask yourself, okay, is this really a real case? And if it is, then it's time to have a discussion with your spouse on that case, right? And how do you know if you have a filter when you're talking with each other? All you have to ask yourself is, do I trust my spouse with what she's saying to me? Or I don't. And if you don't, that means that needs to be a conversation. Okay. So now let's go back. Uh, Here's a rule. This is, again, validation for me is more about the conflict. It's not about the discussion. Because in the discussion, you have to be utterly truthful to get the results that you need. So we'll talk about that later. If you validate your partner, he or she is more likely to validate you back. That is the only way around the negativity in the filter. Okay? If, if you know your spouse is looking at what you're saying from a negative filter, the only way 
around that is to validate their feelings. Then in that particular instance, there was, it left a positive note. The bidding was positive rather than something negative, even though they were expecting something negative. Like, I'll give you an example. Mayada said to me, oh, you really made the bed. Okay. So if you validate your partner, he or she is more likely to validate you. That is the only way around the negative negativity in the filter. So the intent of the speaker versus the impact of the speaker because of the filter. What you think you said may not be what they heard. And I'm telling you, that is the case 50% of the time or more once the partner has a case built against their partner. And the reality is that in more than 90% of the cases, we have some sort of case built against our partner, whether we like it or not. It's just part of life. There's nothing you can do about it. Okay. It's harder to understand a positive statement that is validating. Okay. The story of the couple that went on vacation. So let's see now. Uh, okay, I got five minutes. So maybe we'll end on this. So what happened with the couple that went on vacation? Okay, notice the bidding process here, please. So the couple decides we're going to go on vacation. By the way, if you're having problems in marriage, vacation is not always the best thing to do. Because why? Nothing is in your control. Things go wrong in the vacation. And guess what happens? Every reason to fight happens in a vacation because things don't go as you were expecting. And so if you really want a vacation, it should be very short if you are having problems with your spouse. Okay, the story of the couple that went on vacation. Notice the bidding process now. Couples on vacation, and, and there's many other reasons why vacations go bad, but I'm not going to go into that right now. But couple goes on vacation, and the, uh, the, the couple went with some of their friends. And some of their friends, they like to do hookah. Okay, the husband of this couple, he doesn't like to do hookah or he doesn't like to smoke or he doesn't like to be wherever they were going to be. And uh, so they're on vacation. The husband is like, and so the wife's like, you know, let's go to this restaurant. I really like it. And the husband heard the food there is no good. Okay. So he's like, I don't want to go there and I don't want to go inside. I don't like the smoke environment. I, let's go somewhere on the restaurant where we can eat and drink on the outside rather than the inside. Well, the wife felt, you know, it's going to be disrespectful to my friends and to my family that are with me. So no, why doesn't he come inside for me, right? To do this for me. And uh, everybody wants to go to this particular restaurant that he feels is not that great, but she wants him to go into this restaurant and he doesn't want to go into this restaurant. So now, of course, what's going to happen? He has to go with wherever his wife takes him. So now he's inside that restaurant and the smoke is there. And guess how he's feeling? He is getting agitated. He's reacting. And instead of having a good time, he's, uh, what is the word? Uh, party a party pooper. Yeah, he's being a party pooper. That's one word, I guess. Right? He's complaining. He's upset. And his wife can see he's not happy. Right? Now, what is her perspective? Her perspective is, I'm asking you for the sake of my family and for the sake of my friends, can you just do this for us and let's just be happy about this. Now, when he's he grudgingly gets there and she sees he's upset, she what happened to her bidding process? It got she, it's it's a negative experience in the end of the day. Asking about it was negative. He she had to take control of him, force him over there. Now he's there. He's not happy. She's even more unhappy that why can't you just be happy? So what is happening in the process? Who's at fault? Now, they both have their filters from before. And they both are seeing that, look, I'm right. And this person's wrong. And the per husband's like, I'm right. She's wrong. And she's thinking I'm right. And he's wrong. He should have been more uh, open to my parents and open to my friends. And just go with what is fun. And he doesn't like smoke. But what does she start thinking? She's building a case. She says to herself, oh, he's making it, the smoking thing into a bigger deal than it is. It's, he just doesn't want to be with my family 
or he just doesn't want to, he just wants things his way, right? And that's so typical of him. It's always about him, right? So the story of the couple that went on vacation, notice the bidding process. Um, inshallah, we'll continue from here. Next time, I'll take some questions uh, because the next thing I want to explain is going to be a lot more detailed and needs like a whole maybe uh, conversation. But what I will do if I can is show you this video again so you can realize the mistakes uh, of this video. Let me see. I think it might be up here. Let's see. Okay, listen to this couple after we talked about trust, after we talked about building a case, after we talked about bringing up too many issues, after we talked about being reactive, after we talked about you are responsible for your happiness in the end of the day, even in a relationship. So now with all that in mind, now let's watch this couple fight. I'm going to be showing you a lot of couples fighting over the next uh, few weeks, many different scenarios. You know, we're going to... I'm going to try to discuss everything from the narcissist to the whole range of issues. Okay, now let's watch this couple again. That's him playing video games. I'm going to go do the dishes. Cool. It'd be nice if you help me. No problem. streets here for a little bit. Gary, come on. I don't want to do them later. Let's just do them now. Take 15 minutes. Honestly, want to relax for a little bit. If I could just sit here, let my food digest, just try to enjoy the quiet for a little bit. Get some. Get some. Get some. That's what happens. And we will oh, we can clean the dishes tomorrow. Gary, you know, I don't like waking up to a dirty kitchen. Who cares? I care. All right? I care. I busted my ass all day cleaning this house and then cooking that meal and I worked today. It would be nice if you said thank you and helped me with the dishes. Fine. I'll help you do the damn dishes. Oh, come on. You know what? No. Let's see. That's not what I want. You just said that you want me to help you do the dishes. I want you to want to do the dishes. Why would I want to do dishes? Why? Let me see if I'm following this. Are you telling me that you're upset because I don't have a strong desire to clean dishes? No, I'm upset because you don't have a strong desire to offer to do the dishes. I just did. After I asked you. Jesus, Brooke, you're acting crazy. Don't yeah. you call me crazy. I am not crazy. Yeah, I call you crazy. Just I didn't did. call you crazy. No, I didn't. I said you're acting crazy. You know what, Gary? I asked you to do one thing today, one very simple thing, to bring me 12 lemons, and you brought me three. Damn it, if I knew that it was going to be this much trouble, I would have brought home 24 lemons. Even 100 lemons. I know what I wish? I wish everyone that was at that goddamn table had their own little private bag of lemons. Gary, I'm it's not sad. about the lemons. Well, that's all you're talking about. I'm just saying it'd be nice if you did things that I asked. It would be even nicer if you did things without me having to ask you. Well, you seem to remember doing something for you this morning without you asking. Gary, come on. I'm you serious. Know, no, I'm, I'm serious. I'm I really am. Come on, you knew I was working today and I made that meal and you could have thought to yourself, you know, you could have said, yeah, I, I think I'm going to get Brooke some flowers. You said on our very first date that you don't like flowers, that they're a waste of money. Who never likes flowers, Gary. You say that you don't like flowers. I'm supposed to take that to mean that you do like flowers? No, this is not about, you're not, you're not, you're, 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 that you're not getting it. You're not getting this, Gary. Okay, it's not about the lemons, it's not about the flowers, it's not about the dishes. It's just, um, how many times do I have to drop hints about the ballet? You know I can't stand Brooke, come here. We talked about the damn ballet. I hate the goddamn ballet. You got a bunch of dudes in tights flopping around for three hours. It's like a medieval techno show. It's a nightmare. My sister's in a sweat. The whole thing. I do. When, when the hell's the goddamn nightmare going to end? Go to a damn ballet. It's not about you loving the ballet, Gary. It's about the person that you love loves the ballet, and you want to spend time with that person. Not when you're at the ballet. Okay, forget the ballet. Forget the ballet. We don't go anywhere together. We just went to Ann Arbor together. To Ann Arbor. To the Michigan Notre Dame game. You said. So they're arguing. And so it went to dishes, to what was the second thing? To uh, flowers at one point, to now it's on vacation. So it's like you're building a case, right? Action, reaction, action, reaction. It's to prove your case. Over here, she's. She hasn't done the best job to prove her case, but uh, that's what's happening. You think screaming drunk kids?
kids and leprechauns doing backflips. That's fun. That's fun for me. Come on, man. I did that for you. What do you? How do you show up for me? I'm up on the bus every goddamn day. Come for you. on. You I'm busting my ass to be the best tour guide in the damn city, so I can make enough money to support both of us, and hopefully you won't have to work one day. I want to work. All I ask, Brooke, is that you show a little bit of appreciation. That I just get 20 minutes to relax when I come home, instead of being attacked with questions and nag the whole damn time. You think that I nag you? That's all you do. All you do is nag me. The bathroom's a mess. Your belt doesn't match. Hey, Gil, you should probably go work out. Nothing I ever do is ever good enough. I just want to be left the hell alone. And it continues. I don't think I have to finish the whole thing, but you all get the... Uh, okay, so you all get the point. So think about that and then think about the filter and building a case, trust versus not trust, the when, how to talk during a conflict versus having a discussion. Uh, and ultimately you're responsible for your own happiness. Don't ever become a victim because if you become a victim, you start making a case and that is not gonna help. You have to, if you build a case, or if you feel victimized, that is the conversation you need to have. So, you, and as soon as you have a case, it needs to be squashed and talked about between the husband and the wife. The longer it lingers, worse it gets. The more, the more, the longer it lingers, the more you begin to believe it, and bias confirmation comes in. So, those are some of the lessons for today. I will take questions, inshallah, if there's any questions. So how do you stop from building that case? Like, how do you, how would you redirect that? If if you wanted, let's say you had your lesson and that argument started to happen, how would you redirect that conversation? So that is what I was going to talk about next. And that's like a whole conversation in itself. The simple answer is you need to backtrack. The first thing the couple needs to do is to lower their tone. And even the Quran hints towards this, wala tanaza'u is like a tug of war. One side's pulling, then the other side's pulling. One, and this is in general in relationships in Quran. So you need to stop pulling and you need to, number two, become more empathetic in that conflict situation, not the discussion situation. So because in order to have the discussion, you have to understand the other person's perspective. So ideally what would happen is there's a conflict, you empathize, and the person says, I don't want to do this because of X. And you're able to understand that. And you say, I want you to do this because of why. And they're able to understand that. But that only resolved the conflict for that moment. It didn't resolve the issue. The issue still needs to be like this husband and wife that went on vacation. Even if they understood each other, it didn't resolve their conflict itself, right? So they need to then sit down and say, okay, next time this happens, how are we going to resolve this? Okay, yes, I really do understand you don't like smoking. So I'm not going to ask my family to go somewhere like that. Or it's okay. It, husband, wife might decide it's okay. Let the family go one place and we can just for that go another place. Right? What were her fears? And what was his fears? And so again, in the conflict, you want information so that when you're sitting down and having a discussion, because you can't, there's going to have to be some sort of compromise in the end of the day, one way or the other, either husband, wife, or something in between, because both feel that they're right. I mean, no one says anything unless they feel they're right for most, you know, generally speaking. So there has to be that, okay, I understand your perspective. And do you understand my perspective? Now that we understand each other's perspective, how do we solve this? What can we come to? What's in the middle? To, so that that will come to the heart of building that case, meaning to dissolve that case. Building a case is not about one, in, one bid or a few bids. It's about something that's been happening as a pattern. So when you have a case built, that bias is built, and then you need to have that discussion. But to have that discussion, you have to understand the other person's perspective. So now when you have a discussion, you sit down and say, you know, honey, I know you said this, and this is the reason you wanted to do this. But the reason I wanted to do this was because of now this is, of course, vulnerability and all these things come into play. 
well, I was fearing that if you do it, this, I was fearing that such and such thing would happen. And this is why I was saying this. So you have your discussion there and try to come to some resolution. If it still doesn't work, then we'll talk about what to do after that. Because obviously there's limits and moments and where they're, where, what do you do if nothing works? So that's also a question, right? So we'll come to that. Inshallah, what are the questions? No more? Okay. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Yes? All right, everyone, inshallah. Uh, one should, I, I don't know if you'll cover this too, but someone is asking, is it important or when should they have a third person to watch the conversation and to redirect like a mediator? Like how, what is that, when is it necessary and is it important at what point? Uh, when the two couples cannot negotiate and they've come to an impasse, <laughs> then uh, having some elder or somebody come in the middle at that point might be helpful. Or there's another option, which is the traditional Islamic option, which is that you choose and you agree upon somebody amongst the elder that you will go by his decision or her decision. So the husband lays down the case and the wife lays down her case and, and the next person, whatever he says, you have to do that. That's what the prophet uh, offered Aisha. You know, that when uh, the prophet and Aisha were fighting, the prophet said, okay, let's make Abu Bakr the judge. And Aisha said, radiallahu anha, that of course he's gonna side with you, right? But I mean, but the, but the lesson there was to let somebody be the judge if the two come to an, a situation where they can't decide. In the beginning of your talk, you talk about not letting, like not allowing the situation affect your mood. No, it will necessarily affect your mood, but not to affect your happiness. So happiness is more of a long-term thing. Mood is more immediate. So of course, what somebody says in a moment, it affects your mood. But you overall understand that your happiness doesn't come from this person. So I was thinking in context of what you said in the previous chat, how you just kind of like block it. Like if it goes on and on and on, let's say, like in her situation, you don't do the dishes, you don't do that. Like he would just stonewall and just not hear anything, so it doesn't affect his mood. <laughs> well, it's affecting his mood too, because that's why he's stonewalled. It's affect he he's the victim in his mind, right? Which comes out at the end of the discussion because because when he it's that's why I chose this one because he he first is being defensive, defensive, defensive. And she is the one that's saying, you're not doing this, you're not doing this, you're not doing this. And then he comes out being offensive, which is, you're always nagging me and you don't give me 20 minutes of rest. So in his mind, he's the victim. In her mind, you can't even do anything for him. You don't show any care for me. It's not even, and she was right in the discussion when she said, it's not about the dishes. It's not about the vacation. It's not about going out. It's not about the ballet. It's not about that. It's about how you respond to all things that I want, right? It all comes down to that. So the, she was just presenting kind of like her case that she's built. <coughs> but there's some very difficult questions. If, if things don't get negotiated, you get into a very tight spot. You know, then what are the choices at that point? Either you change yourself and you just accept, okay, person A is not going to do this. They've never done this. Even if they say they're going to do this, they're not going to do this. They're not going to change. So the only other thing you can do is change your own attitude that you're okay with that. 
and yeah. people, and if you're not okay with that, then you need to either make it, is it a deal breaker? And if it's not a deal breaker, then how, how far are you willing to push it for it, some negotiation to take place? But generally, I will tell you, my experience is that husbands usually, like husbands especially, okay? Uh, husbands will not know how serious a situation is in the wife's mind. And when she sits down and tells him this is a deal breaker, like really seriously, he will take act. He will at that point take action. Generally speaking, Do you, is this this advice that you're giving? Could it work if only one? Yes, and that is the whole point. That's the whole point. Things can slowly work out as long as one partner is trying to make it work. If both are saying we're not going to make put effort into the marriage or invest into the marriage, then it's not going to work. Yes. So that is the question. Where, How much of an emotional bank account do you have? Which is why you need to put yourself first and your happiness first, especially if you're dealing with a situation where there's a lot of conflict in a marriage. That's where you need to say, well, no, I'm coming first because you need that emotional bank account for the long run to make that marriage work. So you put yourself first. I hope that solves or answers to some aspect. If you're seeing you're getting into a lot of conflict, then you do need to put yourself first because people will need the emotional energy to keep moving forward. That would be perceived as like you not caring about that. And, and, and that's perhaps where it will go until people sit down and talk. That will be a decision you need that has to be relayed that because this is the situation, you may perceive it like this, but I'm just actually doing this to hold on. So, inshallah, we'll talk more about uh, high levels of conflict uh, as time goes by, inshallah. But I hope this, what I presented today, gives you some tools on how to move forward. Okay, inshallah. As-salamu alaykum.